Alrighty. We are recording. At least I hope we're recording. <laughs> Hi. We're gonna make some characters. It's school holidays. I'm gonna try and crank out some videos. Hopefully you can read from there. What's going on? We've got some dice. Uh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, 4th edition. I've got my character sheets here. Oh, we don't need that. That's... We'll need that for later. <laughs> we'll get into that a bit later on. Um, yeah, so today I thought maybe what we'd do is make some, make some characters. We won't need dungeon mapping stuff just yet. We're going to make some characters uh, for D&D. Well, my chief security officer's over there playing around. One, two, we're going to make four characters is the plan to start off with. Just so we get a nice round party. Start with the best chance of success. We have six sheets. We're only going to use four of them today. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to try and kind of make them all at the same time. Uh, as you can see, I've got four sets of dice here. We've got a fire set, uh, which I keep in my homemade... Uh, my brother-in-law calls this the Oscar the, Scro uh, Oscar the Grouch Scrotum. <laughs> um, you know, for my puppet fur. Uh, I've got a whole set of those uh, red fire dice. We got these, but I lost the D12, which makes me sad. Uh, you know, I used to work in a gaming shop and someone someone rolled it and it disappeared and we never got it back. Earth dice, I have a special rule. These are Ninja Earth Chessex. If I go to a gaming shop and they have them, um, I have to buy them. That's kind of my, my, my rule. Uh, See so if you're a gaming shop and you know I'm coming to visit, get them in stock. <laughs> I have a whole bag of them as well. We've got these ones. What are these? Twilight Speckled. They're purple and gold. Uh, and these ones are dark blue with green lustrous. Uh, they're kind of like ants. So we've got like fire, earth, air, water, right? <laughs> it works out. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Uh... Let me, I'm just trying to work out the best way to do this so that we've got enough space. Move all these dice out of the way. Here we go. And uh, oh, move my lichen. Ugh. <laughs> so weird to touch. Uh, and yeah, just without further ado, I thought we'd um, make some characters. Uh, and luckily, the fourth ed book, I'm just going to use the player handbook for the fourth ed. Uh, I do have. The Powers books, the Martial Powers, Primal Powers, um, Arcane Powers. They are actually very helpful if you're looking for good supplements for this uh, this set, uh, this this edition. Those those I quite like those because they give you character options. And unlike Fifth Edition, where kind of I feel like the character options are all a bit like yeah whatever, uh, you know they kind of added in a way that is you know who cares. Uh, in 4th edition, they actually kind of made a difference, right? Because the playstyle is super important, and it is built around those abilities. But if you have a look here... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 8 races, <clears throat> and if we look at the classes... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 classes. Wouldn't you know... So, we have four characters to generate, and, um, one, two, three, four, <laughs> and so I thought, what easier way than just, uh, rolling eight times, we are rolling four times with a D8, so, what we're going to do is each, um, character will be represented by one of these elements of dice, right? And we might make their personalities kind of vibe with that. Where'd I put my pen? Alright, so, so we've got, uh, we'll put fire, water. What kind of element would you be if you, uh, if you were an element, what would your element be? Let me know in the comments. I am definitely water. I was feeling sick, like I said, I was feeling sick in, uh, what have I missed? Fire, water, air. Uh, I was feeling sick in, uh, the Hilton when I stayed there and, uh, uh, at the end of the everything, is like I had a big bath. That just made me feel a lot better. I'm like, I'm definitely a water Pokemon. My wife jokes I'm a Psyduck. You know, I always have a headache. <laughs> Alright, so, fire is number five. Uh, one, two. You know what? I'm even going to write in my book to make it easier. 
for me to do this. Six, seven, eight. One, two. I know it's sacrilegious to write in your book, right? But hey, man. We'll see. Now, I'm not planning on using any of the fancy, like, other stuff. Um, half elf. Is your half elf? Where's the race? Half elf. Uh, like, you know, mythic generators or whatever. Um, also half elf. Uh, but we'll see how we go. I'm gonna try to use just the, the rules. As much as is possible. Eight Tifling. Oh yeah. My current D and D character is a Tifling. And who are we missing? Air. Two. A dwarf. Nice. A dwarf an air dwarf. That's interesting. There you go. Ciao. Alright. Fire. Seven. Warlord. Oh nice. We were talking how much I like the Warlord. Now, hopefully we get a good spread and hopefully we get a healer. I guess the Warlord lets you heal, so that's a start. Water is number three. Paladin. Well, there you go. Look, already I'm pretty chuffed with this class. We've got a very leadership-heavy class. I also like that, um, you know, you've got your Warlord, you've got your Paladin, their fire, water, their personalities are going to clash... Their roles are quite similar. Already the story is writing itself, you know. <laughs> Earth, one. Cleric, nice. So a bit of a holy mission. We're on a mission from God. Uh, and two. Oh, the Blues Brothers reference right there. Fighter, all right. We are not very sneaky. We are not very um, magical. But. We are very strong in the divine, and we are strong, uh, you know, fighting, which is, you know, I think that's very survivable. <laughs> if you're going to have, out of the four areas, to have, like, you know, thievery, magic, divine, and tank, you know, like, fighting, uh, you know, if you have healing and fighting, the divine and fighting, you, you should be okay, right, in theory. That's, um, that's pretty good, I think, <laughs> as a start. <laughs> Can't, um, can't go wrong with that. Oh, the other thing we need to do for whilst we are here is, uh, work out... Let's go, like, uh... Let's do some kind of... Some kind of gendery type deal. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go, like, uh... Let's say one, two, three can, can go male. Four, five, six, female. Seven, eight, they, them. Here we go. Ciao. All right. So fire. He says that's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, gender. M for male. Pronouns. He, him, water. Male. Uh, six, earth. Female. And air. Uh, other. <laughs> okay. Nice. Here we go. Alright, let's have a look at how to make a character. How to play. I know how to play. Making characters. Your first step in playing D&D is to imagine and then create a character of your own. So, uh, number one, choose your race. Done. Choose your class. Done. Determine ability scores. Uh, right, now, determining ability scores is uh, a bit... The, the way they wanted you to do it was with standard array and then point by. And the reason for that is because they want everyone to be fairly equal and even. Um, the rolling of the dice is something I do quite like. Uh, and I think we will definitely be, um, be doing here. Let's just start by... Um, I'm going to jump ahead a bit here for a second. And... Jump ahead, jump ahead the, the races. Just really quickly add the... Add the bonuses. So we had a dwarf. Had a, 
the dwarf was the cleric. No, the fighter. Uh, dwarf fighter. They get now again. Unlike other editions, so up until fourth edition, there was like pluses and minuses. Fourth edition was the first one that was like we only go up. We don't go down. Wolf. What is my cat doing? My cat is going crazy. <laughs> uh, plus two to constitution and wisdom. Yeah, so we only go up in um, in fourth edition. I might move this over a bit so we can see those things. Uh, what else we got? Halfling? Uh, half elf, I should say. Half elf. They get plus two to constitution and charisma. Lots of con. Let me say charisma. And we've got a second half health. Uh, plus G. Plus G. And then finally, Typhling. Whoop, too far. Too far! <laughs> Typhling. Earth Typhling. Uh, plus two to intelligence and charisma. Okay, so, like I was saying, uh, you know, they, they they want you to do these ones because it's, you know, better better for party balancing if everyone has more or less the same stats. But I am going to roll, I'm going to do, uh, you know, 46, drop the lowest. There's a big part of me that likes to just take what we get, <laughs> you know what I mean, in order. Um, so my goal is to do that as much as possible. However, we know sometimes this cannot be done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now it is possible to get like a three or whatever on this. So what my house rule usually is, is if it's below an eight, you can choose to reroll. Um, just cause you know, six and sevens that can cause a problem. I don't mind playing characters with six and sevens. Uh, but yeah, anything lower than that is definitely not good. So that's the plan anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna have a crack at that. Let's start, uh, our warlord. So we should probably look, what, what is a warlord's key? Um, we, did we open straight to warlord? <laughs> Warlock, warlord. No, we were, we're one, we're rogue. Warlock, warlord. There we go. All right. So the warlord... They say, where is it? Their key abilities are strength, intelligence, charisma. So we want to keep that in mind, right? That's that's what we want to focus on for him. Uh, so here we go. So strength, this one needs to be good. Here we go. Welcome to the RJ channel, where it doesn't matter if I say something needs to be good. In fact, saying something needs to be good means it won't be. And uh, nine. It's nine... Mm. We're going to put that there. <laughs> like I said, I'd like to take them in order. We'll see how we go. That's a bit better. 13. Uh, uh, that one is 11, 14. Uh, that one is, oh man, pretty mediocre. Uh, 11. How many we got? We got two more. Come on, man. It's time for the big ones. Uh, that's not great. Another 11. <laughs> you guys have seen me roll dice before, right? Oh, see what I mean? Four? So we're definitely re-rolling that. <laughs> Oi. Eight, nine, ten, twelve. So this is like the most mediocre warlord in existence. <laughs> All right, I think, uh, what did we say? Strength, intelligence, and charisma, was that right? Um, you know, how important is each of those, I guess, we want to think. Let's have a look at, at what, um, like what role they play. Intelligence modifier is used for kind of, you know, giving the buffs. Strength is for our, our doing our own damage. Charisma, obviously, for roleplay purposes. Uh, oh, no, there you go, for your dailies. Interesting. Hmm. Well. I th 
think we will. Yes. Okay. Well, for the fire, uh, for the warlord, I think we will dump decks a bit because um, they are they're going to be wearing some chunky armor. I think. I imagine. I don't imagine them going going first a lot. I think the warlord you want to be going later on anyway, because um, they they can like reactivate and respond to things. So it's actually better for them to be slower. From my experience of playing them in the past, um, charisma. If we chuck. Uh, 12 in the Charisma slot. That'll give us a 14. Which gives us a plus 2. Which, that's that's not nothing to sneeze at. Especially in these, these un uncertain times. <laughs> we'll put our 14 in Strength. Uh, and then 13 in Intelligence. Uh, gives us plus 2, plus 1. And uh, then 11s, oh, that becomes a 13, which is good. That gives us a plus one for healing. And 11 for wisdom, which is a plus zero. All right. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Let's see what's next. A paladin. That's a paladin. Uh, Ranger. Look, my book opens to Ranger quite uh, frequently because it knows that is <laughs> that is what I do the most. Uh, oh man, Paladin has a lot of abilities, doesn't it? Paladin is going to want Strength, Charisma, and Wisdom. So let's um let's roll, roll them bones, oi! <laughs> That's a 10. <laughs> so again, as much as I want to do them in order, I'm aware that my rolls are going to be garbage. That was... A, okay, so that's a 6. We're going to re-roll that. <laughs> are you kidding me? That's an 8. No, that's still a 6. It's the same. Like, it's not like I'm not giving them a good jangle. That's also an 8. Well, that is an 8, actually. So we'll, we'll take that 8, I guess. Alright, we'll keep one 8. We're not going to have the whole... Thing under under ten, but look at that three rolls under under eight. You know what I mean? Like it didn't um ten. Oi! Can I roll above ten, please, for the last three? That was a six. I'm keeping that. <laughs> GM, you heard me. You saw me roll it. It stays. Finally, uh, <laughs> six six four sixteen, baby. Finally, some justice in this world. All right, yeah. That's, let's see, look at that. I got two ones because I kept a cheeky six. It's 11. I mean, technically 11 is above 10. It's giving me what I want, right? All right. <laughs> there we go. Another 16. All right. I'm happy to take that roll. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Paladin. Oi. <laughs> so what's it say we want? We want... Strength, Charisma, and Wisdom. Let's have a look at what their prayers do. Again, Strength is mostly dealing the damage. Charisma is giving you your effects. Like, you know, your fear. Um, on pain of death. We'll have to work out which build we want for each one as well. But um, for now, we'll just generate some abilities, eh? Uh, what else we got? So I'm not really seeing the intelligence, the intellect come up they did say intellect right? intelligence? oh, wisdom again, I'm not seeing wisdom really come up anywhere in any of these them their spells like it's, all, it's all strength and charisma focused alright well, I think uh, if we want to, oh, do we want an 18 in Charisma? 
he's very charming if we do that um yeah i think that's what we have to do 18 in charisma plus four baby so it's a 16 plus the two uh and then strength we want to be the other 16 just plus three then I guess we put 11 in wisdom because that's our next best stat we'll put a 10 in con which will give us a 12 this gives us a plus 1 and then uh, are you going to dump dex as well let's dump his int and keep 10 dex that's a 0, that's a minus uh, 1, minus 2 Minus one. Let me double check that. Eight is minus one, right? <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, minus one. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so there's our stats for the Paladin. Cleric. Oh. Cleric, cleric, cleric's the first one. Okay. Cleric, they say wisdom, strength, then charisma. Look, what do they actually use it for? Channel divinity uh, and to turn undead is wisdom based. Healing does not uh, have any bonus. Lots and lots of wisdom. The strength modifier still for damage. That doesn't help. Uh, yeah. What are we seeing? Wisdom is definitely the big one. Which, I mean, that's no different from any other version of d, &D right? Okay, what's she going to have? So... Wisdom, Strength, Charisma. Okay, let's go. Ciao. Hey, it's another six. Uh, that's a, off to an optimistic start. Uh, that's 14. It's all right. 11 and 3. Yep. Yeah. Oh, another 14. 14 the magic number, baby. There you go. That's more like my normal rolls. <laughs> 7, 9. <laughs> Two fourteens and a nine. Oi! Hullabaloo, what is that? Uh, so we've got uh, 17. Wow. The Lord is with thee. Alright. <laughs> Maybe not. That's eight. We're paying for those 17s. What have we got? we got one more. Okay. If it's above 10, we'll keep it. Alright. Oh, it is above 10. That's pretty good. That's the best roll I've had for a long time. <laughs> Nine, thirteen. Wow, okay. There we go. Well, can't argue with progress. That 17's gone straight in wisdom. <laughs> uh, plus three. Uh, uh, what did they say? Strength is the next most important in theory. And charisma. Well, if we put put a 14 in Charisma, which becomes 16, sorry. That's a 16. Because of the plus 2. Uh, so that becomes a plus 3 as well. Uh, and then... I'm going to put the 13 in Strength. Uh, just because I want that 14 in Con. Because I want the extra... I want the extra plus one health for my, you know, cleric, the the main source of healing in the party, I guess, uh, which gives us a dex of, we're, we're a very slow party, do we do dex nine or int nine? I'm going to go int nine, dex eight, uh, just because, just because we want that. <laughs> We want we want we want the int to get bumped up a bit because that oh maybe not 
I was going to say, that used to be a deal for, you know, skills, but forfeit, I think, is the one that removes all the skills, uh, you know, all the cool bonuses to skills. It really stripped down how many skills you get. Fighter, last one. What do they need? Strength, dex, wisdom, and constitution. Wow, why do you need four for the fighter? <laughs> Let's have a look at their abilities. Um, yeah, it's lots of strength damage. Not seeing a lot of a lot of wisdom. <laughs> why are you telling me get wisdom for the fighter? What does the wisdom do for the fighter? Constitution. Strength, 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 strength. Strength, strength, strength. Strength, strength, strength. Strength, strength, strength. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's roll some strength. <laughs> Oi! Take the lowest. That has not happened to me in years, guys. I cannot tell you. I don't think I've legitimately rolled an 18 for character since I was, like, in my teens. I'm 38 now. Oh, 15. We just had to warm the dice up, guys. That's all it was. We just had to warm it up. Hey, that's not so good. <laughs> that's only six. We're re-rolling that. All right. Uh, four. Uh, three is seven. And five is going to be 12. That's still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, eight and two is 10. Wow, this is... See, I'm glad we rolled it. Uh... Uh, it's just the, the men that are a bit weak and crappy. Much like real life, right? That's how it works. Uh, <laughs> just got bad stats. That's our problem. Uh, nine. <laughs> okay, last one. Ciao! Oi! Fourteen. Look at that. That is the best dice rolling. Who am I and what have I done with RJ? <laughs> That's not how we roll on this channel. What happened? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, that 18 has gone straight into strength. Do I keep them exactly as is? You know what? I'm going to keep them exactly as is. Uh, you know, true to my word. Uh, 15 is 17 in con. Plus 3. Oh, plus 4. Plus 3. Uh, what's next? 12 for dex. Just plus 1. Uh, 10. Plus 0. Uh, nine. Nine gets a plus two, so that's going to make it, uh, ten, eleven. Plus one. Is that plus one? No, that's plus zero. What am I doing? And fourteen for charisma, which is plus two. We're a very charismatic party. Alright. Look at that. We got stats. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Uh, you know, our leadership is a bit not great, but what are you going to do? Uh, My book is so dirty. It's from all the years of use. All right. Determine ability scores. Check. Done. Choose skills. Measure your ability to perform. Select feats. And then select powers. Uh, and then choose equipment. All right. And then fill in the numbers. So, let's have a look at our skills. We'll do them in reverse, I guess. I should have left it open on fighter. Oh, we'll do the cleric first, since I opened to the cleric. A cleric is earth-based. Gotta keep that in mind. So, trained skills, religion. So we automatically get religion, uh, which in this one it gives us plus five. Uh, so trained, yes. And we get to choose three more trained skills at first level. We can have Arcana, Diplomacy, Heal, History, Insight, Religion. We already get Religion. That doesn't make sense. Uh, so, I think we definitely choose... Is that right? Do you, is that re is religion like... 
Do we get that one for free or do we have to buy it? <laughs> Why would you get it again? Can you train twice? I don't think you can train twice, right? Let's have a look at, like, uh, just jump over to Paladin. Oh my gosh. If I can find it. They also get religion. Yeah, everyone gets a train skill, right? Oh, no, so he doesn't even get that. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. All right, well, we get religion for free. Yay, three others. We are going to train in. Whoop, what was the list? All right, since we don't have any um, magic, I think Arcana is definitely one to go with. Um, for sure. So we've got... Uh, I better put my int in there. Minus one for that. And minus one for that. Uh, and... Diplomacy, Heal, History, Insight. I think definitely Insight is uh, a worthy one to have because that is, you know, social spot, right? And then Diplomacy, Heal. I think we put Heal. Give them Healing. And that will, uh, that will give us the trained skills that we get. Now, our build options for the Cleric are going to be Battle Cleric or Devoted Cleric. Battle Cleric, if you choose to concentrate on melee, you find a good assortment of strikes to your liking. Achieve this build. Strength is your primary score. Wisdom, your secondary score. Charisma, your tertiary score. Uh, make sure you concentrate on powers with melee attacks. Weapon focus. Diplomacy, Heal, Insight, Religion. Is that what we took? No, we took Arcana, Heal, Insight, Religion. Um, well, actually, Arcana, Heal, History, Religion is what the Devoted Cleric has. So, with this build, you should stand back and concentrate your abilities, keeping your fellow adventurers healthy and optimized. To this end, choose powers uh, that are uh, that, that grant bonuses to healing, such as Divine Glow, Beacon of Hope. Assign your highest ability score to Wisdom, which I think we did. No, we did Charisma. Oh, no, yeah, we did Wisdom. Uh, and sec Charisma Secondary. So there we go. So we've built a Devoted Cleric without realizing it. They said take Channel Divinity associated with your Deity uh, as the suggested feat, uh, which we, we might just take their recommendations. How about that? We'll just build it based off their recommendations. We'll go Channel... Divinity. Uh, makes sense for a Typhling, right? They're they're on a they're on a quest to sort of you know redeem their sinful ways. Uh, suggested at will powers. Now are they at will powers on this side? Yeah, there we go. All right, so we've got uh, Lance of Faith and Sacred Flame. Hi, I'm Lance of Faith. Sacred Flame. Uh, encounter Power, Healing Strike. And Daily Power, Beacon of Hope. There we go. We'll have to work out which deity we're going to choose. Um, but, yeah, there we go. Devoted Cleric. We'll have to think about what... Uh, what Paragon path we take. Here we go. Here's a list of the gods. Now, for the purposes of this game, we are going to be in Mystic Times, my fantasy setting. Um, we will choose a god from this list, and then I'll, like, translate accordingly what the, um, you know, what the alternate one is. Uh, I'm thinking Coralon, just because we have that arcane sort of connection, and this is going to be kind of my character's only connection to magic. So maybe if we say that this Typhling maybe grew up in, in Centrex with the High Elves... And that would make sense as to why they would know about magic. It then also gives us the equivalent of, um, 
you know, the elven magic god from uh, from from Mystic Times' world. <laughs> so I think normally when I play a cleric and things, I usually do Sehenin as Trickery and, and Moon. Like, I love Sehenin as a goddess. I think that's such a cool cool concept. But I think that's what we're going to do. We'll do the god of magic. The god of magic. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. Oh, we also get all this stuff. I'll fill in all the blanks later. You don't want to watch me fill in blanks. Um, but there we go. So we've got our feet, our skills, and our powers. Done for that one. Who's next? Fighter. Let's find the fighter. Creating a fighter. We'll have to decide. Do we want... What are the builds? <laughs> Great weapon fighter or guardian fighter? You're interested in dealing out the most damage you can. I think that's, yep, that that's it. Whilst the guardian fighter, you fight smarter, blah, blah, blah. That kind of works with this party being quite defensive, but I think what we're lacking is the damage dealer. And so I think we will go with the great weapon, the great weapon fighter here. So let's just have a look at what we do get. We get, we get to choose three trained skills at first level. We can have athletics, endurance, heal, intimidate, or streetwise. Maybe the fighter is like a mercenary, uh, which is why it kind of doesn't fit with the rest of the group. <laughs> uh, so we'll give them streetwise. And their charisma is 14. Wow. Plus two. We've got so much charisma, guys. <laughs> this is crazy. Um... Sorry, I should have taken Athletics, Endurance, and Intimidate. But I'm going to take that streetwise because this is going to be kind of our, our shifty, our, our shady dealer. Um, you know, I definitely think Intimidate, that works. Um, that's Charisma, that's also plus two. Uh, and then we get one more, and I'm going to pick Athletics just so someone can make those Athletics rolls. <laughs> to climb up and... Oh, and plus four to strength. Why wouldn't you take athletics? That's a nine. That's crazy to start with a nine. To start with a nine skill level. Um, you do add half your level two uh, as well. So, you know, I'll fix all the numbers up later. Now, they say cleave, reaping strike as our powers. Oh, wait, feats. They say power attack. Well, how can you not do power attack, right? Power attack. Uh, which works differently in 4th Ed. I'll have to look up how it works. At will powers, they say cleave and reaping strike. So we'll do that. Cleave. Whoops. Reaping strike. You know, I'm just going to go with this recommendations to start with. We'll actually read, and if we don't like them, we can always change them when we level up. That is how the game works. Spinning sweep. Like a dishwasher. Whee! Uh, and Brute Strike. Alrighty. There we go. Fighter, done. Who's next? Oh, let's put him on the not done list. Paladin. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> so we start with Religion. Oh, that works kind of for the fighter as well. You know, air is all about... Dealing the damage. Water. Keep in mind we're water, you know. This is uh, you know, this is our water character. We start with religion, so we get the five in that. Our int is minus one. Maybe that's where the int comes from. And we get to choose three more. Diplomacy, endurance, heal, history, insight, intimidate, religion. So we already have our insight character. I think diplomacy is definitely... A way to go here. And with Charisma 14, why would we not? Um, so let's do that. Sorry, 18, I mean. The plus 4. Endurance, heal, insight, intimidate, history. Um, we already have intimidate covered. Endurance feels like he's a good character to have endurance on, I think. Con is plus one. Uh, and then I get one more, and I think we'll go with... Oh, do we do history or insight? We've already got a character with insight. 
if we take insight with the paladin, it kind of gives us a backup, like a reroll almost of, of getting those kind of social encounters. But I think we'll do, we will do history just so we've got someone who can tell us about, you know, the law. Oh, and it's a minus one as well. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> he doesn't always get history right. Let's put it that way. Paladins are not always on the correct side of history. So we've got avenging and protecting. Avenging is about dealing damage and punishing the wicked. Paladin uh, protecting is about defending. Let's have a look what they took. Diplomacy, heal, insight, religion. Endurance, heal, intimidate, religion. We didn't really do either of those things. What does water represent? Mm. Let's have a look at what they say for scores. So they said... Strength is your highest ability score versus your best ability score could be charisma. So it looks like we're going protecting and strength your second best. So that's the one we've we've kind of chosen. Healing hands as our feet. It doesn't hurt to have two two kind of healers going in the party there. Uh, very heal heavy party. <laughs> Bolstering Strike and Enfeebling Strike. Enfeebling Strike sounds good. Sounds like that's sort of making the enemy not, not do lots of stuff. Uh, Encounter Powder Shielding Smite. And Daily Power. Radiant Delirium. There you go. Alright, there's our paladin done. And now the warlord. Lots of warlock powers. Warlord. Uh, alrighty, so... They get to train four from the last one. Hang on, did the fighter have four as well? Let me just double check that. I don't think so, but, uh, you know, they're the only one that didn't get given one for free. So, let's just double check. <laughs> Three. Yeah, okay, cool. So, the warlord gets an extra one that they get to choose. That's pretty good too. All right. <clears throat> Athletics, diplomacy... Endurance, heal, history, intimidate. Well, we've kind of got all of that covered, right? Let's do another athletics check. Uh, his strength is plus two. Give him that. We'll give him endurance as well. And then... Heal and diplomacy. We'll do... Yeah, diplomacy, so we've got a backup diplomacy and heal, so we've got backup healing. Lots of healing. Can't go wrong with that. So you've got a combat leader. Oh, uh, whoops, sorry. Inspiring Warlord or a tactical Warlord. So, Inspiring Warlord lets you sort of help your allies heal up and do, do their things. Tactical Warlord helps you sort of maneuver people around. Let's have a look at what their abilities are. Commander Strike versus Wolfpack Tactics. Commander Strike. Ally of your choice makes a basic melee attack. Uh, versus Viper Strike, sorry. Which is, you actually deal a bunch of damage. The target shifts before the start of your turn. You provoke attack of opportunity from you or an ally of your choice. I think we go with Wolf, I think we're going to go with the the tactical warlord. All right, so tactical assault is the feat. I don't know what that does. We'll look it all up in a minute. The powers they've said endurance, heal, history, intimidate. Well, we didn't do that. Athletics, diplomacy, heal, history. So again, we didn't really follow any of their skills at all. So that's fine. <laughs> okay, Viper's strike. That gives him a sort of condition, and then Wolfpack Tactics. I do remember Wolfpack Tactics, and Hammer and Anvil were the two um, 
the two that really dominated back in the day. <laughs> Is Hammer and Anvil one of the other ones? No. Uh, Warlord's Favor. We've, I guess we've got the, the Paladins protecting, right? So, um... It's going to give us a, uh, you know, a bit of a... It's good to have someone who, you know, who can sort of lead the attack and someone who can lead the defense. <laughs> An offensive coach and a defensive coach. Uh, and then lead the attack. I don't even know what that one does. Let's have a look at what... There you go. Hammer and Anvil was... Uh, this one was... Man, do I switch that? What's Warlord's Favor do? Attack, two weapon damage, strength, one ally within five gains, a plus two bonus to attack rolls. Yeah, okay. Uh, lead the attack, three weapon, strength, modifier, damage, until the end of the encounter, you and each ally within five squares of you gain a bonus to attack rolls against the target equal to one plus your intelligence modifier. Yeah, okay. Right. Anyway, well, there you go. That's our um, that's our characters made up, basically. Uh, let's double check to see what else is is next. I think it's just buy equipment, right? Choose equipment, which I can do off camera. Fill in the numbers. Role play character details. Perfect. I'll uh, I'll get all that done, and I'll see you in the next video.